Well, hello there. It's Kira, and today on Polymer Clay TV, we're going to do this bottle. And I wanted to share with you uh, the fact that when I do a full coverage bottle like this, I take a lot of care in the beginning to make sure that my base layer, which in this case would be the green, has as few bubbles as in it as possible and is making full contact with the glass. And then when I bake it, I start in a cold oven and I put the piece in on a tray and I let it heat up with the oven and then I turn off the oven and let it cool inside the oven and that is one of the ways that you can help not get cracks in your clay because of the expansion and contracting of the heating up and cooling down glass. I also cover the foot of the bottle so that the glass is not going to make contact when you set it down and I wrapped into the bottle as well. I did leave the glass exposed on the inside so that you could use it as a vase or something if you could put water in this. Let's go ahead and get started. First things first, you're gonna to want to remove all of the labels from your bottle. So get out an old blade and start scraping them off. I have rolled out a bar and a half of my souffle, the color is pistachio, into um, these, which are a number five, fairly thin on my pasta machine, just to cover the bottle. I'm gonna do a good job of that and make sure all my seams are nice and that I don't have any air pockets. And then I'm gonna just bake the bottle. That'll be how that gets started. And I'm gonna use these two molds. This one I'm gonna use with accent colors to make the bottle look fancy. And this is the mini bling, and I'm going to use liquid Sculpey and pigment powders in this mold, and I'm going to bake them in the oven to create my own bling to put on the bottle. So for this process, I have a brush, a soft brush with a, with a tip that can reach inside the mold. I have my Sculpey liquid clay. I'm going to use the gold for this. A selection of pigment powders and a um, brush cleaner which really pulls the mica out of the brush for when you want to change colors. So, I keep my pigment powders upside down so that a little bit is in the cap when I flip it over like that. And I'm just going to pick gemstones here and fill like paint inside the well with the pigment powder and because it's a silicone mold the pigment powder does want to stick to it so I'll do a couple hearts I'm just gonna do a bunch because I'm not sure exactly where I might want to put them on my bottle but I know I'll use a bunch of them So just paint the powders of your choice inside the mold of your choice, and then we'll be back. Okay, so when you wanna switch colors, like I'm done with the pink, you're just gonna use something. I used to use a scrap of a silicone baking um, mat, or I would use the back of another mold because the silicone really pulls the mica off of the brush. So then you can easily switch colors without contaminating the next color. All right. All my wells are filled, the ones that I want to use. So let's go ahead and fill the mold. And the Sculpey clays are nice because they're a little bit thick and they have a spout where you can get some control so we're just gonna squeeze the clay in and kind of let it level inside the mold. It'll level itself out eventually. And if I've made too many gems for this project, I'll just save them. I can always use them on another project. But it's nice to be able to make your own polymer clay gems 
in the colors that you want. So just fill that up and I would let, I'm going to, here, this is what I'll do. I will tap it a couple times on the surface and that helps get the bubbles out and it gets the clay to settle down into the mold. Um, for one like that, I might take a needle. Here I have an etch and pearl. And just kind of drag it out to the edges so that it does go into all the corners. Same thing with anything that's pointy like that. If you see that it's not going out to the edge, just drag it out there. So once they're all filled, you're going to let it sit for about, I would let mine sit for about 10 minutes before putting it in the oven, and that way you know that it's all settled down. All right, these are out of the oven, and this is what they're going to look like. So we can just pop them out of the mold. So they're basically lightly colored with the pigment powders. That paint dries really nicely. It's a folk art color shift. So it's kind of a blue-green turquoisey color. And it shifts a little bit from green to blue depending on how the light is hitting it. It's really nice. And then I took my Floor Fancy mold that looks like this, and I made sets of three. Basically, I took a section out of this right here from there to there, and I made three of them. And I took this, this one, and I made three of those out of uh, Primo Wisteria. It's a purple color. So I've got those sitting off to the side, and I'm going to cut this into strips with a straight blade. And try to make like a, multiples of three or five work really well for decorating. So I'm just going to press them on to my already cured bottle. So this, I know I'm going to cover this so I wasn't worried about it. Um, this has already been completely baked in the oven. And I'm just going to, let's see, go around it with my silk screens kind of making stripes. All right, so I placed them where I wanted them and pressed them down. That's the good thing about letting the, the acrylic paint dry, then you can manipulate your clay however you want. Just make sure that it's all making contact so that it bakes on there well. And then I rolled out some Primo Accents Antique Gold Snakes of Clay, and I'm just going to put one along the bottom here. So here you can see that I did a little texturing. I came in with my mandala texture stacks, or my, I guess we call these. Here you can see I did a little texturing. I used my Moroccan mandala texture stacks, especially, uh, let's see, this one that has this sort of pointy star in the middle, and 
this one that makes this sort of circular flower design. So I had fun with that, just pressing it in between. And now I'm going to add the purple parts and the gems. So that is just a question of where you want to put them. So I was thinking that these larger ones would go sort of around here. And I'm not going to press them down very hard because I want to see how far around they're going to go. I'm hoping I can get three, but I might have to trim them a little to make them fit. Yeah. So when you're doing stuff like this with elements, you want to just kind of lay them on and see where things line up. I know I can get this big part over one of these, see, centered, but that means I'll have to cut off or entwine like that the sides of the element. This one is kind of stretched out, so if I scrunch it up a little bit, I bet I can make them all fit. And then I have all these fun gems to play with. And I have this. I have my liquid clay to help them stick. I can really decide what I want to do here. Maybe I want to stick a heart in the middle of this one. And that's why I pre-baked them so that you can just grab them and jam them into raw clay and make them stick wherever you want them. And let's see, maybe this fun thing for this one. So this bottle will look different depending on what angle you view it from. And then maybe I'll make some little, I've got some hearts. This is actually going to be a gift for my dad because he's a big craft beer drinker. So. I'll put a heart and this big thing here and one of these, no, maybe one of these. And I'm going to make little things, little like medallions to go in between these open spaces. So you can do that however you want. There are some other elements on this mold. I mean, you can just do what you, whatever you want, however you want to do it. Like for example, there's this thing here. So maybe you just want to capture that part of that mold. That's the fun part about having molds is that you don't have to use the entire thing. You can use a portion of it. See, I like that. I might leave that alone and just leave it there. Or maybe I'll take some of these smaller gems, stick one of them here. See, you can just play. Just play with it till you like it. I like to use the cap there to tap off the extra so I don't get big globs of pigment on my clay. Okay, so I'm just going to finish powdering and then I'm going to bake this for half an hour and do the last of the detailing and I'll show you what that looks like. We're done baking and it's time for the final decorating. And I just wanted you to know that once you're done baking, you can use all different kinds of paints. For example, this is Scribbles 3D fabric paint. This is a Ranger Liquid Pearls. And I'm going to use both of these. You can see I've already started. So down below in the empty spaces, I created this little design and up top here I'm doing the same thing and it's really just practice a little before you do this on clay so that you know what design you want to do and so that you can steady your hand. It helps to find a spot on the piece where you can rest your hand so that you're not wiggling all over the place.
and then down here I just filled in the top a little bit and then go right down the side you definitely should practice with your paint so that you know what the flow is going to be when you start squeezing and letting it out of the bottle and then remember I said I would cover up this seam area so I'm just making a design like this giving a little squeeze of paint and then I've got a brush here so I can fill it in and then you just let the fabric paint dry overnight and it dries shiny which contrasts with the clay it's really cool you can do anything you want so I'm just gonna continue decorating until I feel like my bottle is complete I hope you enjoyed this idea and that you will return and visit with us next week on polymer clay TV